Good morning. Welcome to worship. And for those of you on the live stream, welcome to worship at Lutheran Church of the Resurrection. If this is your first time on our live stream and you'd like to sign our digital guest card, we'd love to follow up with you and share more with you about our mission. It is season changing time of the year, so lots of announcements to talk about the seasons. First of all, a reminder that we do have our Thanksgiving Eve worship service this Wednesday evening, seven o'clock. Uh, Pastor Nicole's got something very special planned, a special service that she learned about during her sabbatical, so it should be quite interesting if you're available seven o'clock here in the sanctuary on Wednesday. With the new year coming, we've got the new flower chart for dedications and the new coffee sign up for those who want to provide coffee fellowship during the year. They're both out in the Northex this morning. In terms of change of year, believe it or not, next Sunday is the first Sunday of Advent. We have Advent devotional books for you. They're out in the rack in the Northex. So please make sure you pick one up today because you're going to need it to start your Advent devotions next week. Additionally, in your mailboxes are order forms for Christmas poinsettias. If you'd like to dedicate a Christmas flower that will be up uh, decorating our altar on Christmas Eve. And of course, this year with Christmas Day being on Sunday, also on Christmas Day, the order forms are there for you. Um, Karen will need these back by December 4th. So please take care of that uh, quickly to get your flowers dedicated. Reminder that Pub Talk for Baby Boomers, our next one is going to be a week from Tuesday. That's uh, November 29th at the Anderson Pub and Grill. Uh, George Parker's got a very interesting uh, talk for us about health and wellness. Um, certainly a pertinent topic for baby boomers. So we look forward to hearing from George and having conversation week from Tuesday. Today is the culmination of our world hunger emphasis. Uh, Julie Pahutsky will be leading Adult Sunday School again using another one of our ELCA Hunger at the Crossroads videos. So you can be in person in the library or catch that on the live stream on Zoom after worship. Uh, also a reminder that there are hunger mail, um, envelopes in your mailboxes. Um, if you lost track of yours, there are some extras on the credence table if you'd like to make your donation to the Hunger Appeal today. For those of you online, on our online giving site, there is a button for ELCA World Hunger. Um, so you can do that online. Um, Kathy, would you get Steve to come in here real quick? Um, so, uh, you know, f folks sometimes say, where are miracles, you know? Jesus performed all these miracles. Where do miracles happen in our world today? Um, I think a miracle is coming walking through the door this morning. Um, on Tuesday, Steve Ray had surgery to receive a new heart valve. And here he is this morning with his new heart valve. Welcome, Miracle Man. I mean, Jesus didn't say, Steve, you've been bent over for 18 years, let me stand you up. But um, somehow a surgeon takes a valve and puts it up his femoral artery and the guy's got a new heart valve. So. Um, in fact, it happened so fast that Nicole, Pastor Nicole and I didn't even have a chance to visit Steve in the hospital, which means consequently we didn't have a chance to give him a prayer quilt, which means we're going to do that this morning and most of you know the drill. So we're going to pass this around the sanctuary. The ribbons are on the corner. Tie a knot on the ribbons. Say a prayer for our miracle man this morning. Thank you. I wasn't asking you to say anything. I just wanted to say that you're the miracle. We give thanks to God. Yeah. Those are our announcements and our prayer announcements for this morning. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Congregation, please stand as you're able and face the baptismal font. On this Christ the King Sunday, we culminate the church year with hope for the fullness of God's reign in the world. 
especially a world without hunger. Blessed by the Holy Trinity, one God, who redeems us in Christ Jesus, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. I was hungry. He blamed it on the communists. I was hungry. 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 Lord, when did we see you hungry? grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. when we may be seated as we hear the word in scripture. A reading from Jeremiah 23, verses 1 through 6. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, says thus, says the Lord, the God of Israel concerning the shepherds who shepherded my people. It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. 
so I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock and out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he shall be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Word of God, word of life. The second reading is from Colossians chapter 1, verses 11 through 20. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience, while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, visible and invisible whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place and everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. Word of God, word of life. Holy Gospel for Christ the King, Sunday is according to St. Luke, the 23rd chapter. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. 
One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. This is the gospel of our Lord. Irrigation may be seated and the children come forward for the children's sermon. guys, I'm going to read you a story, so you have to come up close. I'm glad there are lots of children. Every, hi, everyone out there. I'm, I'm speaking to you as well, but it's a lot easier when you actually have an audience of people. Um, so this morning, we're talking a lot about hunger. This is the end of our hunger appeal. And I thought I would read you a story about two kids. Their names are Maddie and Sophia and they are friends. Um, and so I'll try and read and show you the pictures at the same time. When Sophia and Maddie played in the park, they stretched their toes to the sky, they climbed to the top of the ladder and flew off the end of the slide. They stayed until the, the buildings grew long shadows and even the taxis stopped honking. Sophia's stomach growled. Let's go get a snack. No way, Maddie said. Let's stay here. Yes way, Sophia ran to Maddie's building and raced up the stairs. Wait, Maddie ran after her. Maddie was the best climber, but Sophia was the fastest runner. Sophia swung open the door of Maddie's fridge. What have you got? We have milk, Maddie said. I'm saving that for Ryan, he's still little. Why, don't you, why doesn't your mom go to the store? Sophia asked. We don't have enough money. But what if you get hungry? We have, bread, we have some bread, Maddie said. I guess I'll go home to eat, Sophia said. Please don't tell anyone, Maddie said. Okay, promise? I promise. Good timing, Mom said. Dinner is almost ready. Sophia's fridge, oh, sorry, I can't read upside down. Luis was waiting, was waiting on the floor with Pepito. Sophia opened their fridge. Pepito peeked inside. Sophia's fridge was full of milk and eggs and tortillas and cheese and lettuce and jam and salsa and tofu, and even a half a can of dog food. Here you go, Mom said. Sophia and Luis each had a plate of fish and rice. Mom had a plate of fish and rice. Even Pepito had his bowl of dog food with a little fish and rice. Sophia couldn't tell Mom. She had to keep a secret. She had to keep her promise to Maddie. But that night, she had an idea. Now you have to see the pictures here. Yuck, Maddie said the next day. Oh, Sophia said, double yuck. Fish may be good for kids, but fish is not good for backpacks. <laughs> the next night, Sophia, Luis, and Mom ate frittita. Pepito had his dog food with a little bit of tatito as well. Maddie and Ryan ate Maddie and Ryan still had an empty refrigerator. Sophia couldn't ask for help. That would break her promise. She would have to try again. So after dinner, she packed some eggs for Maddie and Ryan. Yuck, Maddie said, double yuck, Sophia said. Eggs may be good for kids, but eggs are not good for backpacks. That night, Sophia and mom and Luis had burritos. Maddie and Ryan still had an empty fridge. Sophia 
wished she hadn't made that promise to, May, to Maddie. So that night she packed up her backpack along with some tortillas, beans, cheese, and even some milk. Um, thanks, Maddie said. You haven't even looked, Sophia said. Is it fish? Maddie asked. No. Is it eggs? No. Is it gross? I don't know, Sophia said. Maddie opened up the backpack, looked together, one, two, three, go. Burritos are good for kids and good for backpacks, too. Do you want some milk, Sophia asked. Thanks, Maddie said, but I think I'll save that for Ryan. That night when, so when Maddie got, or Sophia got home, she opened up her fridge. She reminded herself that it was full of all sorts of good things. But Maddie's fridge still only had a little bit of milk. Now it had beans and a little bit of tortillas and some cheese, but it was still pretty empty. Sophia didn't want to, to break her promise, but she couldn't help Maddie alone, Sophia told. She hoped Maddie wouldn't be mad. I'm glad you told me, Mom said. Let's see what we can do together. So they packed up grocery bags full of milk, chicken, carrots, sugar, oil, and even some frozen meat and vegetables. At Maddie's apartment, the moms talked, Luis and Ryan played. Sophia and Maddie ran to the park. You broke your promise, Maddie said. I'm sorry, Sophia said. Are you angry? A promise is a promise, Maddie said. You are more important, Sophie said, than a promise. I wanted you to have milk too. Maddie smiled. Are we still friends, Sophia asked. Always, Maddie said. Double always, Sophia said. So this is a story about two friends, one who didn't have enough to eat. One of the things we're doing with our church during this season as part of just Christmas and also our hunger appeal is collecting food for, for families who don't have food down in Eastern Kentucky. So if you haven't, talk to your folks, get one of these, they should be in their mailboxes or out in the entryway, take a, take a box, fill it up, get some groceries and bring it back for kids like Maddie who might not have enough to eat. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you so much for all the gifts that you give us, for the generosity that you have. Thank you for reminding us that we are to share what we have um, and to give to others who might not have as much. Please help us to do that in every way possible. In Jesus' name, amen. You can go back to your seats. Well, the weather's gotten awful cold this past week, hasn't it? I think Mother Nature is trying to tell us that it's time to move indoors. And you know what that means, don't you? It's time to start practicing our putting. <laughs> because in golf, you know what they say, don't you? You drive for show, but you putt for dough. So it's never too soon to start practicing my putting. Ooh. Ooh. The truth of the matter is I am terrible at golf, but we are blessed to have some really good golfers in our congregation like Mike Cheney. So Mike's going to give it a shot. He even brought his own putter with him this morning. He's going <laughs> he's going to show you how you do this. Go ahead, take, take as many practices as you want. Read the green, make, make sure you go. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That was definitely going in. It was going in, but you're not prepared. We need to get you prepared for this. You gotta have the right quality clothing on. And before you take your putt, I got a $100 bill here. It's going to our hunger appeal in your honor if you make it. 
not to put any pressure on you. Go Buckeyes. Take your time. Good try, Mike. That was about as close as mine was. <laughs> Sit down, buddy. You're done. <laughs> You're not getting another shot. That's my $100. <laughs> no, actually, because I'm so passionate about hunger, I'm going to give this to Julie Pahutsky and say, in honor of our hunger task force, put that in the hunger offering envelope this morning. So I know what you're thinking. Pastor, you've lost your marbles. <laughs> You're out of your mind. You're supposed to be preaching about hunger this morning. What does golf have to do with world hunger? This year, everything. Everything. Many years ago, there was a golf instructor named Ron Curran here in Cincinnati. And the name of his golf school was Instant Bogey Golf. I thought, what a creative name. You know, I was shooting a hundred or better in golf, and I thought, this guy could bring my score down to 90. If I were serious about golf, Ron Curran would have been the guy for me. But what was even more interesting about this guy was his logo. Instant bogey golf, I turn chess into checkers. Isn't that a great line? I turn chess into checkers. Those are the kind of people I want to surround myself with. People who know how to take hard problems and solve them. If I were serious about golf, Ron Kern would have been the guy for me. My point this morning is, when you're solving a problem, you need to understand what game you're playing. Are you playing checkers or are you playing chess? The theme of our hunger emphasis this year is ending hunger isn't just about food. What our hunger task force has been trying to teach you over the last four weeks is that ending hunger is about systems. Now when we say ending hunger is not about food, I know that's counterintuitive. So let me just say it again slowly. You don't end hunger with food. We are playing chess when it comes to world hunger. There are all sorts of systems and they are intersectional and woven together and all the pieces are moving around the board. So if you've been paying attention to the Monday morning emails for the past month, you know our hunger task force has been trying to teach you that ending hunger is about homelessness and gender identity and climate change and conflict. But those aren't the only systems that contribute to world hunger. I can think of a bunch of other ones. Joblessness, poverty, lack of education, lack of health care, migration, corrupt governments. All of those things contribute <laughs> to people being hungry, and they're all interwoven. <coughs> We're never going to end world hunger with canned goods. Now, I know that's counterintuitive, but in this congregation, with our hunger ministries, you all ought to have an understanding of that. Let's talk about manna from heaven and our ministry in Myra, Kentucky. God bless my wife, Cindy. She has been passionate about feeding hungry people 
in poverty-stricken Appalachia. She has scoured Cincinnati to find sources of food such that for many years now, we have been sending 20 to 25,000 pounds of food to Myra each and every month. God bless Chuck and Sandy Farmer and Bob Herr and Derek Mukhtarian and Mike Cheney and Phyllis and Ed who make that 10 hour round trip to Myra every month to deliver the food down there. For years, we have been shipping 20 to 25,000 pounds of food to Myra. And you know what? There are more hungry people there today than when we started. How can that be? Well, because something called a pandemic that has to do with systems of joblessness and health care because there was tremendous record flooding in eastern Kentucky last spring. Climate change is a system that contributes to hunger. And I have been challenging Cindy for years. And we have had, let me tell you, difficult conversations about this manna from heaven ministry. And I keep asking her, what about self-sufficiency? What about development? Is our ministry just a shipping company between here and Myra? And she tells me about the seeds of change and about seedlings and about fruit trees and about a chicken ministry and says we're working on development. And she reminds me that it's more than just about food. It's about proclaiming the gospel. It's about loving the neighbor. It's about prayer and building community. We're never going to end hunger with canned goods. I know it's counterintuitive, but we ought to understand that from the Doppenberg's ministry in Guatemala. I mean, Jeff has said to us ad nauseum, their mission is not about handouts, it's about hand ups to get the Guatemalan people to stand on their own two feet. So the Doppenbergs provide wood burning stoves. Why? Because of systems, because of health care for the Guatemalans who have smoke in their homes, because of deforestation and reducing the amount of wood that's burned. The Doppenbergs are reintroducing chia and chaya into the diets of Guatemalans because they are nutrition-filled vegetables. The Doppenbergs are all about medical clinics and dental clinics and nurse checkups to address the system of health care so that they get a hand up, not a handout. So let me be clear. We are never going to end hunger with canned goods and filling up food pantries and collecting Christmas giving boxes. But there is a reason that we do this. Remember what Jesus said, when you saw me hungry, you fed me. When you did it to the least of these, you so Jesus calls us to do this. As Kirsten said, it's great to take our children and our grandchildren grocery shopping and fill up these boxes and then decorate the boxes with them. And while we're doing that, remind our children that there are other children who are hungry so that we are developing a sense of justice and passion with our children because they're going to be the next generation of hunger advocates. Of course, we collect canned goods because they do get us from today, at least until tomorrow. And that's a good thing. So for all of you who are going to fill up 
a Christmas giving box for a family in Myra? When you're sitting at your Thanksgiving table this Thursday, I hope you feel good about that. I hope that maybe you even say a prayer for the family in Myra that's going to have Christmas dinner because of you. Because when it comes to hunger, we are much more motivated by empathy and gratitude than we are by guilt. You know, in this congregation, we ought to understand that you don't end hunger with food. And yet still, it's important to hand out food. You might remember in the spiritual gifts video that we watched in September, the Ray family was in Guatemala with the Doppenbergs handing out food. But Jeff and Rita were very clear to the Mayans. That was not the Doppenberg's mission. That was an absolute graceful gift from their church in Cincinnati. It was a one-time deal, but it was important to do that. The point I'm trying to make is when it comes to world hunger, we're playing chess, not checkers. We have to address the causes, not the symptoms. Hunger is the symptom. The cause is systems. On a chessboard, the pieces all have unequal value. In life, every one of God's children is of equal value. And so we have to dismantle the systems that keep people in hunger if we're going to end hunger. Let me tell you a very simple story that gets at the point. I heard this many years ago from Art Simon, Lutheran pastor and founder of Bread for the World. He said there was a small village and on the outskirts of that village there was a high cliff. And people from the village kept falling over the cliff. And when they landed on the ground, the townspeople would have to call the ambulance to come and take the people and bring them to the hospital. And it kept happening over and over again. They kept calling the ambulances until finally one of the townspeople looked up and said, you know what? We need to build a fence at that cliff. And then we won't have to call the ambulances anymore. So let me be very clear and to the point and sober about this. We need your canned goods. Where's my hundred dollar bill? What'd you do with that? <laughs> but more importantly, we need your Benjamins. Because if we are going to stop climate change or homelessness, we need to dismantle the systems. And we need your generosity to do that. Now, filling up food pantries is fine. But calling your legislators in Washington, D.C. and telling them to make the child tax credit permanent is the way we end childhood hunger. We need your Benjamins. But let me say it to you clearly. Your generosity is making a huge difference. The generosity of Lutheran Church of the Resurrection is making a huge difference. And the work of the ELCA is making a huge difference because we've got really bright guys like Ryan Cumming who understand that we're playing chess when it comes to hunger. And we're not playing checkers. You should be generous because you are making a difference. I share something with you that absolutely blows my mind. I just cannot believe this. On page 13 of your worship folder is a fundraising letter from the ELCA. Cindy and I received this last summer. This is now the fourth year in a row that Lutheran Church of the Resurrection has a connection to the ELCA World Hunger Fundraising. There are 9,000 congregations in the ELCA. 
We have been featured four years in a row. Friends, that's not a coincidence. That is a witness to the vitality of this church's ministry. Four years ago, the fundraising story was about a girl's school being built in Guatemala. Before that story ever came out, a family in our church had come to me and said, Pastor, we have an inheritance. We would like to support a girl's school. Do you have an idea? Yep, because we had a connection to the Guatemalan Synod. And that family made a huge contribution to that girl's school before the ELCA ever started any fundraising. Three years ago, the story was about Ascension Lutheran Church in New York. Their parish demographics were changing. Lots of Hispanic folk were moving into their parish and they needed to change their ministry to preach the gospel to that community. ELCA World Hunger provided them a grant in order for them to do that. Just so happens that Ascension Lutheran Church in Deer Park is the home church of my paternal grandparents. Last year, you all know what the hunger story was, right? We're chicken women. Not only did the ELCA produce a written piece for its fundraising, but for the first time ever, they made a video. You watched that video during our hunger worship service last year. And now this year, the story is about Gethsemane Lutheran Church in Chalmette, Louisiana. Most of you probably forgot there was all kinds of tornadoes and horrific climate change weather in Louisiana in the spring of this year. So much so that it wiped out the social service network in St. Bernard Parish. The only food distribution site that was left was Gethsemane Lutheran Church in Chalmette. The only one left. It just so happens that in 2006, Lutheran Church of the Resurrection's third disaster relief trip was to Chalmette, Louisiana, to Gethsemane Lutheran Church. And in that week, our team put up over 350 panels of sheetrock and painted the sanctuary. You get the picture? We put that church back in business. And now 16 years later, they are the only game in town for hungry and disaster stricken people. Do you understand what that means, Lutheran Church of the Resurrection? All summer long, you have been feeding hungry people stricken by disasters in Louisiana. Who knows? Maybe you're even doing that this morning. Your contributions to our hunger emphasis make a huge difference. We are at $21,000 this year. We'd like to get to $30,000. That's been our goal and we've made it for the last five or six years in a row. Your generosity makes a difference. Please grab a hunger envelope and give as you are able this morning. You know, it's kind of appropriate that we culminate our hunger emphasis on Christ the King Sunday. The message of Christ the King Sunday is that in Christ, God has announced the kingdom, God's reign, God's heartbeat, God's desire, introduced in Jesus, but not yet here in its fullness. What does the reign of God look like when there is justice and righteousness in all the land? As long as one of God's children is hungry anywhere on this earth, God's kingdom is not here in its fullness. So let me be clear this morning. When it comes to world hunger, we're not playing checkers. 
we're playing chess. The work is hard. The work is complicated. But it is faithful. Brothers and sisters, this morning, let every one of us commit to that work so that we can say the day when we can say checkmate to world hunger. Amen. Oh, 
for all Time to add a lot more chance Some people get Most people don't Some people share Most people won't Up to me Change my corner of the world. It's up to me to change the world. Please rise and turn to page 16 in the worship folder. We affirm our faith. I believe in God, maker of an unfinished world, who calls us to participate in bringing about the fullness of creation. God, who created abundant United with your saints across time and place, we pray for our shared world. Almighty God, in Christ your reign and your heart became known to humanity. While Christ's spirit lives with us and in us, we are still far from the fullness of the kingdom. So we pray for the church and for our sister communions that we would act wisely and faithfully to execute justice and righteousness in every corner of the world. St. Peter and St. Paul Lutheran Church in Zarentine, Germany, the Navajo Evangelical Church and Mission in Rock Point, Arizona, our missionaries, the Doppenbergs in Guatemala, Allen Temple AME Church, and for Hope Lutheran Church here in Cincinnati and Pastor Christy Beckman. Lord, in your mercy, God of abundance, we pray for those who are traveling this Thanksgiving holiday. Grant safety and give joy to family gatherings. We pray for those who will be spending the holiday alone and for families with one less place setting this year. We pray for those for whom holiday gatherings bring grief or anxiety. May they know your comfort and compassion. Lord, in your mercy. God of grace, as we consider our blessings in this Thanksgiving season, let us be mindful that the best thanks we can offer you is to be generous with all that you have entrusted to us. Inspire us to be faithful stewards, especially generous in our efforts to confront hunger. We pray for the faith and passion to keep this congregation's mission vital in our pursuit of justice, especially for the least of these, the victims of systemic injustice. Lord, in your mercy. Compassionate Christ, heal our loved ones who are suffering or struggling with brokenness of body, mind, or spirit, especially Joyce Anderson, Diane Ross, Ace Hamilton, Gil Stegnero, Christopher Irwin, Steve Jones, John Glenn, Marty Kochevar, Barb Laughlin, Betty Langley, Carolyn Vance, Ed Heestand, Susan Adams, Zach Doppenberg, Kim Volkert, Genevieve Jewett, Karen Woodworth, Kay Lucason, Jennifer Wagner, 
David Vinoli, Irene Dirchi, Judy Atkins, Steve Ray, and Ted Joncha. Lord, in your mercy. God of resurrection, your reign is assured in the resurrection of Christ and his vindication over the powers of this world that defy you, most especially the sting of death. Give comfort to Pam Allen as she remembers her sainted mother, Maxine Schuler, and give that same comfort to the Coford and Moss families as they celebrate this holiday without their loved ones for the first time. Lord, in your mercy. God, the Alpha and Omega, as we bring the church year to a close, we thank you for the year that was, the 51st year of Lutheran Church of the Resurrection. As we now prepare for the Advent season and the ritual of covenant signing, we pray for our faithful mission in a new year. We pray for our church council, especially our president, Adam Vance, and for those who have served their terms and those who will be new to leadership. Bless all of our leaders of ministry and call us all to faithfully live into the covenant of our church in our 52nd year. To God alone be the glory. Lord, in your mercy. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, for those who are departing on our live stream, we wish you Thanksgiving blessings and a blessing for the week ahead. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. you, maker of all things. Beloveds, we have gathered together around our many tables here and in our homes, trusting that through the power of the Holy Spirit, God is building a great table, one that transcends the distance between us. When Jesus took the bread and broke it in the presence of those disciples he walked with on the Emmaus Road, they recognized him. May we, those who gather around Christ's spiritual table, recognize him in this meal that unites us in Christ and with one another. May we find in this meal both compassion and joy, strength and consolation, healing and wholeness, as we walk together in the light of God's love. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should, at all times and in all places, offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
our bread of life, our table, and our food. You created a world in which all might be satisfied by your abundance. You dined with Abraham and Sarah, promising them life, and fed your people Israel with manna from heaven. You sent your son to eat with sinners and to become food for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life given for us and his rising from the grave, we await his coming again to share with us the everlasting feast. By your spirit, nurture us and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want. And by this bread and cup, make of us the body of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. The risen Jesus said to his disciples, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. May the peace of the risen Christ be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of peace with one another as you feel comfortable and on the live stream in the chat. the table before us. Let us make space for all. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, all are welcome. 
And for those who are commuting in their seats or on the live stream, this is the body of Christ broken for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. Lord God, in this meal of bread and wine, the body and blood of your Son, you make of us himself. May we go out into the world to nourish others and to fight hunger in all of its forms. In Jesus' name.
Lord God, in this meal, your son comes to us as bread and wine, body and blood, and it then makes of us Christ. As we go out into the world, help us to meet the myriad needs of hunger in all its forms. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord God, in this meal, your Son comes to us in bread and wine, body and blood. As we partake of it, may it strengthen us to become Christ out in the world, to address hunger in all of its forms, and to break down systems of oppression. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before I invite you to stand, a brief teachable moment. First of all, that Pastor Jordan and I did not pass the course in seminary where you turn water into wine. We're not able to do that. Um, and every once in a while, we have an abundance of folks, which is wonderful. So we didn't quite have enough tiny cups of wine and juice. But here is my teachable moment. Having just finished a First Communion class, I will remind you all that as Lutherans, we believe that communion is just as efficacious if you have it in one form as if you have it in both, meaning that you could have just the bread or just the wine and it's just as good. Jesus is just as present. So that is our teachable moment for today. I invite you to stand as you're able. Let us pray. We give you thanks, most gracious God, 
that you have fed us with the bread of heaven and given us a foretaste of paradise. Enliven us to be your body in the world and to serve those who are in need. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now receive the blessing. Go forth in peace and be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the God who fills the hungry with good things fill us all with Christ-like love and with a consuming hunger for justice in our land and in our world. Amen. Amen.